Hello and welcome to another Kitchen Sink Clinic. I'm Casey Rochefort. Uh, and again, I'm no doctor. I'm just a biologist. And uh, for this episode, I'd also like to mention that I'm an avid skeptic and a fan of critical thinking because I'd like to talk to you about some of the conspiracy theories surrounding COVID-19. Um, assumptions that China made it, blah, blah, blah. These kinds of ideas are dangerous, okay? Um, and here's why. They breed infighting and suspicion, uh, racism, tribalism. Uh, basically, we can't effectively work together to stop the problem. And 18 months from now, the anti-vaxxers will be pushing people to not protect themselves. So educate yourself now and your peers as soon as possible because uh, it's important that we stay on top of this and and preemptively squash those bad ideas. This, this is not a man virus. virus. Uh, a few days ago, some studies were done. Uh, the uh, coronavirus that we now know as, as COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2, it contains some similar RNA to um, viruses discovered in pangolins, um, these anteater armadillo looking dudes. And, and, and humans. So uh, those viruses uh, in the pangolins and COVID-19 uh, have these sugar attachment sites. That, well, let's simplify this. Uh, corona means crown. Um, this virus has little spikes that uh, make it look like a crown. And COVID-19 has a gene that uh, gives the spikes a particular spot that... Um, uh, that a particular enzyme in humans uh, will latch onto. And this enzyme, <clears throat> uh, furin, it's called, uh, it cuts the protein and simultaneously makes it uh, more transmissible, for one, and it allows the sugars to bind to the exterior of COVID-19 and protect it from our immune systems. You can see why that's bad, right? So automatically, this thing... Um, it gives it this ability to make it more contagious and harder for our bodies to fight off. So that's the huge problem here. Um, this type of selection though, uh, it evolves in nature because of the presence of immune systems. Uh, immune systems are a threat to the uh, virus's life and so it naturally selects for mutations in genes that allow it to fight off that threat. Uh, those selections would not be made in the absence of an immune system, such as a Petri dish. So you can see why it's pretty sure that this was not created in a laboratory. Um, the, the other thing that, uh, that these researchers found is that, uh, going back to the cute little pangolins, um, this particular similarity uh, in pangolin viruses was found in after the discovery of SARS-CoV-2. And so this was highly unlikely to have been engineered. Um, no. Now, knowing the minds of conspiracy theorists, uh, they'll just try to say, oh, well, that was clearly uh, their practice attempt that they put into pangolins to see if it would work. And you know what? Um, let's try to steer clear of adding complexity to this already grandiose conspiracy theory, please. Uh, <laughs> it's not really helping anything. Um, and so, so anyway, I, I just wanna also take a moment to uh, have a quick word about uh, some of the similarities between the genetic material of COVID-19 and HIV. This is clearly, simply, common ancestry. Uh, I, I spoke a little bit in a previous video about conserved genes. You should check that one out too, uh, the last kitchen sink clinic I did. And uh, it, this, effectively this common ancestry is just like you and your cousin having the same genes that can be found in your grandmother. Uh, I mean, nobody's saying you are your grandmother or, you know, or the, the, the point that I'm trying to make here is that there can be 
similar genes and things, and they can be completely different. And, and this is the same argument that I've made with uh, vaccines and autism in a, in a previous episode of Kitchen Sink Microscopy. Uh, just because there's some element of something that's bad when it's in something else doesn't mean it's going to act badly in this thing. Not that I want to call a virus not bad, but the, the point I'm driving at here is like this, this wasn't done on purpose. This happens all the time. These are conserved genes and you'll find them all over the place. And this, anyway, this development explains why COVID-19 is so contagious uh, and it differs from other SARS-like viruses that we've seen before. So let's take this seriously. Um, let's make sure we aren't sowing the seeds of unhealthy skepticism and uh, in the form of fairy tales of grand conspiracies. All right, well, that's another kitchen sink clinic. I'll try to keep it short. Uh, hopefully that was um, pared down to uh, a layperson's level of understanding as, as best I could. Um, I sometimes geek out. So uh, let me know if you have any uh, other questions. Uh, let me know if I missed anything. Uh, I'll try to uh, post a link to some of the uh, study findings and uh, have a great day. Don't forget to like and share and subscribe to the channel, please. We'd love it.